Welcome to Go Deeper, Wyndham Art Gallery's podcast channel, part of our Go Deeper program that provides an in-depth look at each of our exhibitions. Today you are listening to an abridged recording of an interview between curator Dr. Megan Evans and artist Ivy Matuku about her work Rain On Me, a finalist in this year's Wyndham Art Prize. A local artist, Matuku is an aspiring filmmaker and photographer who wishes to use the imagery she creates to educate, but also bring an understanding to audiences for the beauty of the untold. We hope you enjoy learning more about this work and that you'll tune in for future interviews with some of our other Wyndham Art Prize 2020 finalists. Hello, my name is Ivy Matuku. I'm a filmmaker slash photographer and I live in Nam, Australia, brackets Melbourne. I really love the image that you put into the Wyndham Art Prize, Rain On Me, and I love the title as well. Do you want to start by just talking a little bit about that work particularly? I was actually working on another friend's project and this photo was actually a behind the scenes uh, photo in middle of a scene. And I think it connected with me the most because it was just so sultry. It was like a woman um, in the shower for a lot of people, uh, no sacred places where they can, you know, think, calm down. And I just thought it was a beautiful image. The title, I think it's pretty like self-explanatory. Like it could have so many different meanings, um, different people in terms of like relationships, self-love. I like to leave my titles for whoever, you know, views it to interpret in their own way. Was it a film shoot that you were working on that you managed to capture this image? Yeah, it was just a uh, short visual. Um, it was a friend's personal project. In between cuts, I just had this moment with my friend China, who was in the image. I wanted to um, enter it because I feel like it's an image a lot of people should see and relate to, essentially. Your work manages to capture a real sense of intimacy, and it's one of the things that I think is really special about your work. It wasn't something that I knew I wanted to capture. It's something that I felt when I captured them. I don't know if that makes sense. Unconsciously, that's what I look for in my images and it really comes out. I think now my intention is to always try to find that intimacy in the people I capture, specifically um, Black people. I think a lot of the time growing up, I never saw Africans um, being captured intimately, especially in in Australia. And I think that was something that uh, we needed to see, and I, I realised it was something that we needed to see is because of how others responded to it. I know that it's relatively recently for you to step into this area. What led you to be an artist? If I really want to go way back, it was my um, media teacher. My background is film, so I learnt all of I know really just from high school media. I also studied film in uni, and photography is actually my most recent one I only just really started capturing last year so for that it's a year it's really pretty recent it's really new I think a picture says a thousand words as cliche as that sounds I have a deep love for visual storytelling there's so much power in the eye and how people perceive the world and photography is an outlet for that have you got any particular people who are your influences? Christine and Rabuga. The way she captures particular people all over the world is just so beautiful. She has this thing about people in nature and like it just feels so like amazing. Another artist that I discovered is a Ethiopian American and he's based in New York. His name is Day Witt. His background was photography, then he moved on to film, but he captures the same intimacy in his photographs. That's what drew me into him and I recently connected with him which I'm so excited about our conversation is about some of the same things we capture and I think that's just so beautiful to find some people who you know think the same way see the same way as you are you interested in continuing in the area of film as well as photography yes I think it's something that's always going to coexist in my life I can't choose one or the other now they both bring out each other um, that's something, a similarity thing that I have with the photographer Day Witt in New York. He takes the photos and then brings it to motion in his films, which is like amazing. Because obviously there's like differences in photography and film. Like film, it's a lot harder to bring out those emotions, but photography slightly a lot easier. But he's able to do that and combine the two, which is just amazing. And you get the same feeling from both art forms. That's really interesting because I would have thought that it was easier to 
delve into emotions in a moving image, but you see it as easier to do with a still image. That's a really interesting perspective. It's not, I haven't always thought this way, but now as I delve into photography, I realise that because there's so many more tricks in filmmaking that you can do that you can't do in photography to create emotion. In filmmaking, you can add sound to enhance that feeling. Photography, you can't. It's really just the um, image that speaks for itself, if you know what I mean. Thanks so much, Ivy, for being willing to be interviewed and look forward to seeing your work in the virtual space of the Windermark Prize 2020.